Welcome back to Old War Stories with Uncle Jay. This one is entitled Oceanography Report Fiasco. 1997, or school year of 96 to 97. Senior year for me. That was at this time 27 years ago. That's scary. That's pretty damn scary. Anyway, Senior year of high school, I had a lot of electives I needed to take. Stuff that, because I was the nerd, I did well in school and took all the more advanced classes earlier. So I had to take shit like typing and shit like that, you know, just stupid classes. I took all of the science classes they had, but an elective science class that I had to take because you need a science class was oceanography. Well, uh, the teacher's name was Mrs. Coffee, C-O-F-F-E-Y. It was also funny because there was uh, another teacher, a math teacher in the school by the name of Mrs. Sweet. And my dad always said that uh, if they met Mr. Milk, they could make some beautiful music together. But uh, that was that. And the nurse's name, her last name was Sickler. That was kind of interesting. Anyhow, Mrs. Coffee, Ms. Coffee, I should say, she was a lesbian. Uh, we knew this. She, she didn't, you know, we didn't talk about it much. Whatever. It, it is what it is. She's entitled to, to be what she wants to be. At least she chose one and stuck with it instead of today I want to be a guy, tomorrow I want to be a girl, today I'm bisexual, tomorrow I'm heterosexual, the next day I'm homosexual. You know, at least she picked one and stuck with it. So we'll give her that. A couple things that were kind of funny about that class. First of all, I had that as my last period class and for she also taught the same class fifth period and that's when I had lunch so I went to the guidance counselor and I said listen what I'd like to do and I knew this was possible because I had heard stories that other kids have done this several accounts of it what I'd like to do is switch my oceanography class to period five instead of eight and in eighth period I'll take a study hall and no lunch and then I can just go home and she said nope no can do I said this has been done many times before well there are a certain number of hours of schooling that you have to have blah 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 so that didn't end up panning out Guidance counselors were misguidance counselors, for sure. They were beyond fucked up. They had big issues, all of them. But anyway, that didn't end up working out. So oceanography, this is a bullshit class, okay? We learned about the oceans and the sea and the difference and da 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 It was boring. One kid, whose first name was Manu, he was not American, maybe he was born here, but not native, you know, not natively American, not a regular guy like me. He was a troublemaking kid, and he was in there, and I remember... He went up to the teacher one time. This was kind of like after class. We like let out a minute or two early. So we're all just talking whatever. So he went up and said, Miss Coffee, if somebody gave you $20 to try pot, would you try it? Fitting for him. But anyway, and she said, no. He said, $10? <laughs> so that was kind of funny. Uh, turns out he was like a big troublemaker, pain in the ass kid or whatever. Turns out 
when I went to college, he was in one of my classes, and now he behaved. High school was a fucking joke. Anyway, back to oceanography in this report. It's toward the end of the school year. End of the school year means final exams. So the teacher said, you have a big report coming up. And I'm going to give you like a month or two, month and change. She gave us plenty of time. She said, what I want you to do is make sort of a book. Now, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be bound or finished like that. Just like a big report in the form of kind of a book. And it needs to be in big type, big letters, because next year I'm not going to be teaching high school oceanography. I'm going to be teaching sixth graders oceanography. So I want you to make this book of plants and or animals found in a particular body of water. This was a group project for people. Uh, I decided to work alone and she was cool with that because I knew that if I was in a group, I'd either end up doing all the work or I'd end up doing all the work. So I might as well do all the work myself. The, uh, the feature of this was that if you get 90% or higher, you are exempt from taking the final exam. So I had an incentive to do well on this report. I don't want to take a final. Fuck that. If I can get out of that, hell yeah, I'm out. So that's exactly what I did. It was 1997. Now, you have to think about computers in 1997. Some of you, a lot of you will remember Windows XP. That was the first thing that we had on our first computer when I was a kid. And small potatoes, kid. Okay, small potatoes. Some of you may remember Windows 2000 or even Windows 98, but before that was Windows 95. Now, Windows 95 was on the scene. Did I have it at the time? Maybe. I can't remember. What I had for a computer was an IBM PS2 Model 95. It had a 486 processor running at 50 megahertz. I seem to vaguely remember 24 megabytes of RAM. Yes, it was megabytes, not gigabytes. It was megabytes back in those days. No, I, maybe it had to have more. I can't remember anymore, but it's it's been a long... I have the machine still. God knows it probably won't even power up anymore. Bad caps and the, and the, and the, the like. But uh, anyway, it's here. This machine was not up to the task. Now, there was no requirement that this be done on a computer, but the report or book had to be printed in color. That was a tall order to fill even back in those days because inkjet printers, while they were around, they cost money. They cost some big money. You'd pay two fifty for those inkjet printers that you now find these days for like fifty bucks. You know, I don't know what they cost these days. The like cheapest given to you with a computer kind of printer that they had for a while. Uh, I, I don't know what it was exactly, but uh, that that was kind of the equivalent of it, and that was a chunk of change to spend in 1997. Now, if you didn't want to do the computer route, and because I'm the computer dick, I'm going the computer route, then you can do this by the old, you know, paper and glue and shit like that, but still had to be in color. So that means that if you had a book and wanted a picture from it, 
you would have to go to Staples or something like that and have them make a color copy. So this was expensive. You could find old magazines that might have this, maybe an old National Geographic, and cut stuff out of that and paste that right in. Yes, you could do that. But uh, what I had instead was the computerized version, and I had Microsoft Encarta. I'm sure a lot of you remember Encarta. And there were some websites, of course, this was all dial-up as well, so it was limited in what you could find. The internet was very, very different 27 years ago. So uh, this computer that I had was not up to the task. It was fine at first. I started off with a title page and then went to the next page on the first plant and or animal that would live in the whatever ocean this was that I had. I can't even remember what the fuck it was. I have the file still to this day, 27 years later, just in case I need to turn it in again, you know. And I did fancy stuff. I did uh, what they call a drop cap, which means, um, you know, um, let's take a, a goldfish, you know, just something... goldfish and it had a big big G and then the regular size type so it's like fancy so you would highlight the G and then do a drop cap thing and the drop down menu and it looked pretty and shit like that and you had to have a picture for each one and it had to be like double spaced and big type so what do you get when you need a printout that's double spaced with text like this big and I'm doing drop caps and pictures it takes a lot of paper paper was cheap cheap enough but it wasn't the paper that was the issue I didn't have an inkjet printer color laser didn't exist if you needed this printed in color, you would need to know somebody who had a color printer or bring it to Staples and have them print it and they had something that they could print it in color on. So it was going to be expensive either way. Now my dad was not going to spend any fucking money. No way, no how. Fuck you, fail it, and take the final. You know, screw you. The report started out fine. And I'd type and I'd type and I'd type and then I'd paste in the picture from a file on disk or something. And you'd wait. And you'd you'd wait. And then you had to resize it so you could drag in the corners and that, like you know. And then you'd wait. And then you'd wait some more, and the report ended up being 54 pages, all told. She wanted us to hand in rough drafts, if you will. And I said, can they be in black and white? She says, absolutely, that's fine. And I happen to have a black and white laser printer. Now, the, uh, the drum on it was fucked up, so it had three big black splotches, like yay big, on each of the page, running down on the right side. But I said, I'm sorry, my printer's fucked up, that's how it is, but again, this is a draft. And she says, okay, no problem. So she was lenient in that regard. But the computer simply did not have enough memory and I did not want to split this report up into multiple files or pages. Uh, call it stubborn. I wanted one file. That's all there was to it. This computer, like I said, was not up to the task. And toward the end of this, it took file, open, 
ocean dot whatever the extension was i think it was wps because i did it in word perfect because i didn't have microsoft word but same difference it said okay open 30 minutes to open this file 25 minutes to save this file. Obviously, the computer did not have enough memory. The program was not well written to handle this kind of multimedia in the sense of a lot of pictures and shit like that. So it was not like today where you could have this and it would just open and it's just everything just works. It didn't in those days mostly because of the computer being old and slow and the second part of it being the program was not well written things like that anyway hand in the final rough draft she said okay good gotta be in color now so now i need this printed in color my father was not going to spend the money to have it printed anywhere but this ties into the previous old war story the Carlucci's which were the family that lived next door well they moved away in about 94 or something and a nice Italian family the Providentes moved in the guy's name was Joe I mean what else you know and the wife was actually Jewish surprisingly can't remember her name offhand she was like oh I like to sunbathe in the backyard no she didn't do it nude and I didn't have a view from upstairs to see anyway um, you know shit like that okay she didn't have to work Joe worked as an insurance or something. I, he made money. He made a lot of money. So they were pretty rich folk. He knew that I worked with computers and that. And he wanted to buy one. And I went to CompUSA back in the day with him. This is like a year or two prior to this oceanography report. And he bought an HP that was a Pentium 166 megahertz, I think. 64 meg of RAM. Um, yeah, it was quite the system. It had, I don't know if it was a DVD draw. No, I don't think it was DVD. It was CD. But he went, we went to the store and he's like, okay, I need software now. I need this, I need that, I need this, I need that. And he bought like fucking soup to nuts. Everything. He bought Microsoft Encarta, Microsoft Games, Flight Simulator, all the popular shit back in the day. Fucking soup to nuts, this guy. Because he had unlimited funds. And he even said to me, pick out something you want. You know, keep it around 50 bucks or so. And that was, I wasn't even looking for that much because I was a kid, you know. And my job was to go and make sure he's buying the right thing and set it up for him. And granted, I was 16 or 17 years old. So that was the deal, you know. So I didn't want much as a kid because I don't know what it actually cost. Later on, I was charging up to $150 an hour. Does anybody get paid that? Who's watching? Toll order to fill, even today. Anyway, uh, the the hours were short. You know, if I had a, a three-hour job, that was 450 bucks. And then I cut him 50 bucks off. Just give me 400, you know, something like that. And that was a lot of money to pay. But people were paying it, even back in those days. But anyway, uh, you know, I kind of stopped doing that. 
But um, I saw him outside, the neighbor. And the computer's set up, it's working. And he also bought an HP inkjet printer, uh, DeskJet 693C, I think it was. 693C. One of their earlier printers, I remember it well, it has these sounds that will take you back. I own that very printer. I also owned the computer for a time, but ended up getting rid of it because it didn't serve any need for me after a time. So I don't have that. Uh, oh, I remember at one point he wanted to upgrade the RAM in it, and we went and we bought the right RAM, but the particular computer had a riser card that plugged into the motherboard to give you the ISA slots, because that's what we had back in the day. Uh, and in order to get to the RAM, you had to remove this riser card and, of course, any expansion cards plugged into it. Uh, held in with six screws on metal stanchions. That's all fine and good. The problem was the screws were made of disintegratium. As soon as I put a screwdriver on that, they would strip. And I spent a lot of time trying to get this damn board out. This riser card. I spent a lot of time trying to get that damn thing out. And finally, I was down to the last screw, which is stripped beyond all belief. And somehow at the 11th hour, it just cracked loose. And I got it. We upgraded the RAM. So maybe it had 128 meg at this point. I don't know. But anyway, I said, listen, I got this oceanography report, and I, ha I did it on the computer, so I have it, but I need to print it in color, and I don't have a color printer. And he says, can you print it here? I said, yeah, I can get it. I can, I can do that. That's not a problem. Um, but the problem is it's 54 pages and a lot of color pictures I said this might run you out of ink though and he said oh, if it runs out I'll buy another one just didn't care the guy was super nice he was a really nice guy they ended up moving away uh, years later but um, they put a pool in as well in the backyard he had plenty of money and um, they were nice people my mother would talk to the lady still can't remember her name might have started with a J whatever but he was like okay with it and I was like like seriously you're okay it's 54 pages and he's like yeah whatever you need so we picked a time and a day, and now I had to get this file over there. Well, that was a little bit of a problem. I was fortunate enough to have an iOmega zip drive, 100 megabytes, and I got, it was the external parallel port one that we all had if you had a zip drive back in the day. It was probably that one. It was like that dark blue color. It was there. In fact, uh, I had a video planned on that. I haven't done it yet. I got, I don't know, four, five, six of them. We could test them out, see if they work. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. At this point, I had the one. So I had to put a zip disk in, format it just to make sure that took several minutes. Then I had to copy this file over to the zip drive. This file was 54 megabytes, if I recall. 32, 54, one of those. Whatever it was, it was taking up almost half the disk. The other option were floppies. We didn't have flash drives. 
and nobody had a CD burner at this point in time so I couldn't burn it to a CD it was the zip drive that's all it was that's all I had and it would do the job so I copied the oceanography report to that fuck even knows how long that took it didn't take a half hour that's for damn sure then the word processing program I needed that to open the file that was on six floppy disks so I think I copied those to the zip drive so now you're waiting for six floppies to buzz through the drive and then it's a write to the slow parallel port and then everything was all said and done now I had to disconnect it bring the drive the cable to connect it to the computer the power supply and the iOmega driver diskette which I put in a plastic grocery bag and I walked over and I rang the bell and I went in and I said I gotta get to the back of the machine so I gotta pull it out of this desk and I did I pulled it out of the desk I loaded the driver up plugged the printer into the zip drive because that's the way it worked in those days zip drive is online ready to go I install the word processor open it to make sure it works copy the report to the hard drive just so I have a fighting chance at it file open ocean.wps ok or open or whatever it said 30 seconds fucking flat this was open it took me 30 minutes to open at home I didn't have a faster computer my father was not going to buy a faster computer that actually happened a little bit later on a couple of years later which I had told in a three-part series of old computers I had over the years links in the prescription anyways um, it opened in 30 fucking seconds flat I said okay okay I'm not even gonna print this I have to see this again and again 30 seconds it opened up file print everything looks good ready to go okay the printer uncaps the cartridges starts loading paper and I sat there now I don't remember the speed of this printer the specs are online I didn't bother to look it up it wasn't slow it wasn't fast but as I was stating before I was handing them these rough drafts uh, black and white printed on my laser printer the laser printer I had was rated at four pages per minute that's 15 seconds a page that's slow but not exceedingly slow the problem with four pages per minute was that was text speed in other words if you had a text document not a Microsoft Word like something that opens in notepad or whatever the fuck they call it with Windows 11 or whatever the fuck it is now just plain straight text if you sent that to the printer you'd get four pages per minute that's actually incorrect factually because it's still a graphically rendered page but it was very simple stuff printers in those days you could send straight text from a DOS prompt that was your plain text that was four pages per minute and the printer would happily crank these pages out 15 seconds a page I don't remember the speed of the inkjet printer but I sat there for a while the problem with the laser was that when I sent in a big print job like that it would go page by page as you would expect the printer had a limited amount of memory the computer we already talked about 
but it would happily send the print job to the printer. But the printer now had to process the page because laser printers and inkjet printers would print on a page basis. If you sent a laser printer straight text and it didn't fill the page, it would sit there and they had a light on it that said data. And that means the data was in the printer, it's processed and ready to go, but the page hasn't been filled yet, so it's not gonna spit it out. There was a button on the printer you could press and say, no, that's all I wanted, go ahead and print it, and then it would fire right up and print it out. But this was all graphics and it had to process. So I'd send it and the printer would say processing. It was not four pages per minute, but more like four minutes per page. Yes, no shit, like four minutes per page. It took a long time. That was 54 pages times four. Two hours. Four hours almost. That's crazy. But you just let it sit there and do its thing, you know? The inkjet was a lot faster than that. But still took a while. I had explained all of everything I had to go through to get this printed in color. And I told her in no uncertain terms that that was pretty much an impossibility almost an impossibility in that day and age. And she said, it's got to be in color or you fail. Absolutely unwavering on that. So it had to be done. And my neighbor was nice enough to let me print it. And here it is, the day to turn in the paper. And I handed it to her and I said, I better get 100 on this report. Is that understood and understood clearly? And I walked away. I failed. I had to take the final. Now I got a hundred on it. <laughs> I didn't have to take the final exam. I was exempt. She got her fucking book that she was going to teach the kids from in her next year of teaching. What happened to her? Don't know. Don't care. And that's pretty much it. Like I said, I still have the file. I still have all that. If I feel adventurous, I might plan on trying to convert that I have to see if I still have the WordPerfect program and if it'll open. Geez, I don't even know. But uh, I, I ought to just open it back up just to see how bad it really was back in the day. Anyway, that's all I got for this one. Thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my neighbor for letting me print that. And he didn't want a dime for it. God, guy was pretty cool. But anyway, that was that. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure you click like. Make sure you click subscribe. And take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.